from the mind of Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov. So I wanted to show you in a little bit more detail how I'm using MainStage for voiceover. So right here, you're looking at a basic setup for me, right? We've got the Soyuz ON7 FET going into channel one here. We've got the Neve 88RS, Precision DSer, and the Holy Trinity down here. So, uh, you know, this is great, but if I want to use MainStage, I have to alter this just a little bit. Let me show you what I'm doing. I'm going to go into detail how I set this whole thing up, but I just wanted to give you a quick overview. So right here you have uh, the signal going right through the uh, console and right, right through the chain. So it's going right into the input and right to the output. Right here you see it on the fader. But if I want to use main stage, right, I need to bypass this fader. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I, I have main stage set up over here. It's all ready to go. And like I said, I'm going to show you in detail how I set this up in a moment. So what I want to do is I want to... If I, and as you'll see, I have this set up in a certain way. So what I want to do is I want to, because I'm going in through, into main stage through console, but what I don't want all my plugins and I don't want my Unison preamp enabled. So we're going to shut, so we're going to shut that off right there. And I also want to take out Oxford Dynamic EQ and the DFC. I want to leave C box because I want to kill the noise and the uh, sibilance going in. So this is really an unaffected chain. We've got CVox and, and uh, DSer, but that's it. That's all that's going on. That's all you're hearing right now. So let me bring main stage back in. So what I'm going to do is I have to set main stage. If I turn main stage on, right, now you'll hear it. You, you hear it phasing because I have it coming in on two different channels. If I can't, I can't set it up to come in on output one and two. Otherwise, you get this. So I, sorry about that. So I have to set it up for here, but so that's why I want to kill this fader. All right. So I'm coming in the main stage in one channel. I brought it in into a virtual pair right here, which just happens to correspond to outputs 39 and 40. For you, it may be completely different. So here I am in the main stage and I have it running into my Amic 909, which, which I, I love the sound of this console. I think this console sounds amazing. Sorry, I keep losing this. So. Um, really basic setup. I can actually, I should trim this down a little bit so it's not breaking up. All right. So this is really it. And as you can hear, it sounds great. I don't really have a uh, perceptible, uh, latency in my headphones, so it's easy to cut through. I'm not having any issues. There's really no more latency in this signal than there was in the, uh, in the original signal, the one right through the UAD. So I can change my overall input right here, All right? This is my, my interface input signal level. And then I just go into my plugins and then if I wanted to enable like a compressor, I can put that in the chain, but I'm trying to keep it really lean and mean. And again, I bring it back into this virtual pair right here and this virtual, uh, this virtual pair controls my overall level into my monitor and recording bus. Now, let me show you how this is done, okay? That's the basic overview. Now, let me just show you exactly how this is done. So let's get out of main stage entirely. Let's quit this. We're going to rebuild a entirely new, hold on. We're going to, let's close that. Okay, sorry about that. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to rebuild a whole new chain. Let me just turn these back on for a second. So what we're going to do is um, when you get a new, uh, when you ask main stage to set up a new, new anything for you, you get this whole thing right up here, quick start, blah, blah, blah. So go down here to mixers. This is the easiest way to do this. Okay. So go down here to mixers, choose this. And what you're going to get is a screen full of mixers, right? You want to clean this up. So we have to fix this first. All right. There's a few things we have to do. Now, first things first, let's go to audio in settings. And we're going to go to advanced settings here. And you're going to set the in-out buffer size to 16 samples, smallest possible buffer size. You're going to turn off safety buffer. And you're going to dry, uh, push driver latency to the least possible latency. Right? So you want your round-trip latency to be as small as possible. If you change any of this, it's going to change this. 
So since we're not going to do anything complex, at least I'm not going to do anything complex, I'm just using one channel in main stage. I'm not running any MIDI instruments, I'm not doing anything, I'm just running a voice channel. So I want as little, uh, absolutely as little uh, as possible going on here. I don't need to change my CPU usage, right? Because it doesn't affect my DSP, so it's the CPU running off my computer. So all I have to do is set this for 16, in-out buffer off, driver latency to less latency, right? You're done there. So we're going to fix this whole thing right here. And you're wondering what this is. It doesn't matter. We're going to get rid of that. So go over here to layout, okay? And just select everything, okay? Delete it, gone, forget about it. Don't need it. Then we're going to do the same thing with all these tracks over here, right? Go over here, everything. Oops. Just select everything, except for you can't select this one. This is the uh, <laughs> this is your metronome channel. You can't delete the metronome channel. And then delete all these, all right? So delete everything. Yeah, like I said, you can't delete the uh, <laughs> the metronome channel. I've tried. Oh wait, can you? Hold on. No, it won't let me delete it. That's annoying. So just turn this off take this out we want what is this hold on we don't want anything other than what we're using and then we're going to go over here and we're going to reset this channel strip for your main output okay so this is really this is everything you need right here except for a channel strip to put your <laughs> your input on so let's make this smaller and then what we're going to do is we are going to add a channel strip Okay, this is going to be your audio input channel strip, your one voiceover track. So create that. Turn, f oops. So we want to turn that down. Again, we want in output to 3940 for here. Oops, too soon. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> it's been a long day, man. So um, let's get this set up first. I'm getting ahead of myself. So we'll put the 909, 9099 in here. 9099. So the 9099 is running in here. We are going to get some level in here and then we're going to mute this. Unmute that, there we go. All right, so now what we're hearing is everything except we got these two plugins still going. Sorry, sorry. And then we got, okay, so we have the Neve off. Sorry, I'm all over the place. So this is what we want, right? Essentially, this is what we want. We want our input right in here, right? And what you're listening to again is the 9099. Let me get rid of that. The 9099 coming into this virtual pair right here. And if I wanted to, I could add more plugins. But I mean, you know, I don't feel like that's necessary. And I could add more plugins here if I wanted to add a compressor, right? And actually, you know, some of the Apple plugins are really low um, impact on your CPU usage, and they're pretty good. But if I wanted to add like a like a decent uh, de-esser or compressor right here, I can do that. And, uh, you know, so hello, hello. Is that triggering? Um, yeah. Why is that not working? Is that not on? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I got to lower the threshold. All right. So yeah, there we go. Okay. So hello, hello. All right. Yeah. All right. So if I want a compression, I can do that. I don't really need it right there, but I'm just showing you, you can use other plugins. So essentially this is really all you need to do to get it set up. You know, um, again, you're bringing it into another channel. Don't, you can't bring it into your main one, two channel, bring it into an, a virtual channel here. And you know, I'm, using the UAD plugins, just these two, DSer and Cvox, to kill noise and sibilance. I don't need them, you know. I could take them out and use something else, but I like those, since why, why, why not? <laughs> you know, they work great. So, yeah, this is exactly how you do it. It's that simple. And again, you can use whatever, you know, plugins you want. I personally like this one. I'm going to turn on my... There we go. All right, that sounds better. So this is me running directly through the Amic 9099 Live. And I really like this sound a lot. So I'm going to 
Uh, now that I have it uh, running very lean, and as you can see, I have this um, console window set up with as few plugins as possible. Usually when you see my console window, it's jammed with plugins for all the tracks and everything. But I'm trying to keep this really low because I, I, don't, I don't want to have anything on anything up here that it may affect uh, my CPU usage or my latency at all. You know, any every single universal audio plugin you add to your chain adds a tiny bit of latency. So I'm trying to keep this as lean and mean as possible until I get to the 9099, and that way I don't have any perceived latency in my headphones when I'm cutting. You know, obviously when when you play it back, you're not hearing the latency while you're while you're monitoring recording, so it sounds fine. But you know, when you have a lot of latency when you're recording, it it doesn't sound so great. So uh, <clears throat> hold on, <laughs> sorry. 106 Allstate tags today. That's why my voice sounds like this. So anyway, um, so this is really basically how you set it up, or at least this is how I set it up. And I feel like this is an evolving process, so things may change. But right now, this works really well. It's very clean. Um, and again, you, you can do this without universal audio hardware. You can use any sort of um, interface. And it'll go right into main stage and use main stage as again, kind of like, I hate to say poor man's Apollo, but I mean, you could use it in the same way. As long as you're using native plugins, you can probably cut live through them in your rig. So yeah. All right. Let me know what you think. <laughs> I know, again, this was a little bit all over the place, but it's been one of those days. But I wanted to really show you uh, in more detail how this thing gets all set up and how it works. And, you know, especially when you're setting up main stage, like especially it's it's not really terribly intuitive how to get this set up like this. And again, you know, um, you're going to have to tweak their, uh, their templates. They don't give you the option of a blank template where you can rebuild it yourself. So just, you know, delete everything you don't need and you can't delete the... <laughs> the metronome track for whatever reason. And uh, yeah, keep it lean, keep it mean, and uh, make some magic. All right, I want to know what you think. Leave a comment. Until next time, this is Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov, Fading to Black.